This is part 68 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to call a WCF service using jQuery AJAX. Calling a WCF service using jQuery AJAX is very similar to calling a method in a code behind file using jQuery AJAX. Here is what we want to do. We want to retrieve the employee data that's present in this database table TBL employee using a WCF service. And then we want to call that WCF service using jQuery AJAX and display the data as you can see here. So the first step here is to create this database table which I have already done. And here is the create table script. And here we have the insert script which is going to insert some test data. I've already executed the script. And here we have a stored procedure which is going to retrieve employee details by ID. So this stored procedure has got an input parameter at ID. The implementation of the stored procedure is straightforward. We've got a single select query which is retrieving ID name, gender and salary columns from TBL employee where ID equals whatever value we pass for this ID parameter. So in case if we pass one as the value for the ID parameter and when we execute the stored procedure, it should return us employee ID one details. So that's it from the database side. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have an ASP.NET web application project. Within the web.config file, I have included a connection string which points to the sample DB database. And that's the database which has got um, our table TBL employee. The next step is to add a class file to this project. So let's go ahead and add a class file. Let's name this employee. And this class is going to have four properties. And I have already typed the code required for, for those four properties. So let's copy and paste them here. So we have got ID name, gender, and salary, all of them auto-implemented properties. These properties correspond to the columns we've got in this database table, TBL employee. The next step is to add a web service, I mean a WCF service, to this project. So right click on the project, add a new item. And when you scroll all the way down, you should see two options for WCF service. We want this WCF service to be called using jQuery AJAX. So I'm going to select this option, WCF service AJAX enabled. And let's call this employee service. WCF services have .svc extension. So this should add a WCF service and would also modify web.config file. So if you look at web.config file now, it has added some configuration specific to our WCF service. So I'm not going to go into the details of this configuration because this has got nothing to do with a jQuery AJAX. So if you are new to WCF service, we have a separate um, you know, playlist that covers all the basics of WCF services. And that playlist is called WCF tutorial. So please check that playlist. So this configuration specific to our WCF service and within our WCF service itself, we've got a service contract and the name of the class here is employee service. And within this service contract, we've got a single operation contract. And at the moment, it says do work. Now let's get rid of all these comments. All right, so let's actually change the name of the function or the operation contract to something meaningful. Let's call this get employee by ID. So this function is going to get employee by ID. So we need to specify what is the employee ID. So we're going to do that using a parameter. And the return type of this function is going to be employee. So we give it an employee ID. This function is going to return us the respective employee object, which contains the details about ID, name, gender, and salary. Now, within this function, we're going to write ADO.NET code to retrieve data from the database. So let's go ahead and bring in the ADO.NET namespaces. We need system.configuration. We need system.data and system.data.sql client. Okay. In the interest of time, I have already typed the required ADO.NET code. So let's copy the code from the notepad and paste it inside this function. And if you look at this ADO.NET code, it's straightforward. First, we are creating an instance of the employee object. And then we are reading the connection string from a web.config file 
using that connection string we are building a SQL connection object and then we are building a SQL command object we want this command object to execute the stored procedure since the command object is executing a stored procedure we have to tell that to the command object and we are doing that by using the command type property this stored procedure has got a parameter so we need to create a parameter object and we are doing that here specifying the name of the parameter and the value for it the value for it is coming in the form of you know a parameter to this function and then we need to associate this parameter object with the command object and we are doing that using the parameters collection property of the command object and then open the connection execute the command whatever result we get we are storing in this reader object and we are looping through the reader and retrieving ID name gender and salary property values and finally returning that employee object so this is straightforward ADO.NET code it has got nothing to do either with WCF services or jQuery Ajax okay so we have our WCF service contract and the operation contract now we want to call this operation contract that is get employee by id using jquery ajax so i have already added webform1.aspx to this project at the moment we don't have any html here uh, within the form section so we want to design this web form so it looks like this and in the interest of time i have already typed the required html so let's copy that html and paste it within the form section so again this HTML is pretty straightforward so we have the literal text ID and then we have a text box to capture the employee ID and then a button which the end user can click to retrieve the employee and then a table and the table contains three TRs within each TR we've got two TDs in the first TD of every TR we have name gender or salary and then within the second TD we have a text box to display either name gender or salary okay so let's go ahead and build this project and let's view this page in the browser okay so now the design is similar to what we have here now we want to call the WCF service retrieve the data and display it within the respective text boxes so within our script section we already have the ready function wired up and when we click the button that's when we should retrieve the employee details the button has got an ID BTN get employee so let's use the jQuery ID selector to find that button and let's associate click event handler so when we click the button we want to execute some code so what should happen when we click the button we first want to retrieve the ID of the employee from this employee ID text box and that text box has got an ID it is txt ID so let's copy that and use the jQuery ID selector once again let's create a variable let's call it EMP ID equals uh, let's use the jQuery ID selector and use the val function to retrieve the employee ID from the text box now we want to issue a jQuery Ajax request to the WCF services get employee by ID function so let's use the Ajax function and let's specify the options for this Ajax function so first let's specify the URL so what's the URL we want to call we want to call this employee service that's the name of the service and WCF services have dot SVC extension forward slash within that service we have got this function get employee by ID that's the operation contract which we want to call so call get employee by ID and you can specify the type of rec uh, you know request that you want to issue we want to issue a post request so I'm going to specify that using the method option and let's specify the content type that we will be sending to the server will actually be sending a JSON string so I'm going to specify the content type as application forward slash JSON and let's also specify the character set so character set equals UTF-8 since we have specified that we will be sending JSON data so we will have to you know convert 
the data that we will be sending to the server to adjacent string. So let's use the data option. And what data are we going to send? We're going to send data for this parameter employee ID, right? So the object that we are going to send will have a single property employee ID and the value for that is going to come from this variable EMP ID. Okay, and we want to convert this object to a JSON string. And there are two ways you can do it. You can either literally convert it by hand by using single quotes, or we can use JSON.stringify function. Okay, and the next thing that we are going to specify is the type of data that we are expecting from the server. And we specify that using data type option, and the type of data that we are expecting is JSON. When the request completes successfully, we want to associate a callback function. And this is the function which is going to receive the data that the WCF service is going to send. And finally, if at all if there is any error, we want to handle that. So let's associate a callback function to the error option as well. So when we receive the error, let's simply alert that. Okay, so this is the JSON object that the WCF service is going to send when the request completes successfully. Now, one very important thing to keep in mind is that the JSON object that the WCF service returns will have a property D attached to it by default. So if you want to retrieve property name value, then you know you will have to use data.d.name. Okay, and we want to display that in the um, text box right and the id of the text box within which we want to display it is txt name so let's use the jquery id selector and the value for that is going to come from the data object that is going to have d property attached to it by default from that use the name property similarly let's go ahead and retrieve gender and salary so the text box id for gender is txt gender and the property name is gender. And finally, salary, txt salary, and the property name is salary. All right, so let's go ahead and build this project one more time. Let's reload this page. And look at this, when we enter employee ID one, get employee, we get employee ID one details. Similarly, let's enter employee ID three, and we get employee ID 3. Look at how fast it works because it's using Ajax now instead of a complete page post back. So here I have uh, you know, the operation contract code. Here we have the HTML and here we have the jQuery code. Thank you for listening and have a great day.